children are dead because of your story. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of What Remains of Edith Finch. <laughs> so, uh, just a quick note. Um, thank you to someone. <laughs> I'm terrible with names, but um, someone and and someone in comments mentioned that um, I should be fine as far as copyrights for the rest of the game. So I turned the music back on, and don't worry when i finish this i'm assuming last episode because somebody mentioned that um i was towards the end of the game um so if i do finish the game in this session i will have a special episode and try to see if i can replay um the events from the last episode with the music on uh so you guys can have that experience uh because everyone expressed that the music is just really really good and it pairs so well um and it adds on to the experience so i'm definitely going to go ahead and make a special episode on that so you guys won't miss anything <laughs> it's just i was just so afraid of um any other potential copyright issues with this game i'm happy i have the reassurance now <laughs> with that so i put the music back on so we'll have that awesome ambient music <laughs> last episode was pretty heavy <laughs> it was a lot so I'm, I'm i'm afraid um to delve in more because it feels like the deeper we dive into this the more intense these stories are getting but let's see what the rest of the the house of finch has to offer <laughs> all right but this was uh lewis's area that is so upsetting man <sighs> very upsetting Jeez. all right anyways let's continue on I swear, if she, like, goes into labor and falls off a cliff or something, and then a bird I'm grabs the baby. Lewis's funeral. My mom told me to start packing. And then a bird grabs the baby, and then, like, it sends it over to some random person's doorstep. <laughs> so the baby could live. I swear, if something like that happens. Oh, my God. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. Oh, damn. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I wish we'd stayed. What is this? These are all the missing papers. But I understand why we left. My mom ended up leaving everything behind. Oh. To teach and learn seven ways to create a fulfilling classroom, Don Finch. What happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe it should have come sooner. But it had to end one way or another. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. Right. This is Edith Finch's room. Wait, is that Lewis's? That looks like the figures Lewis thought of. And there goes the deer, and then the shark, and the boat. This is a synopsis of what we went through, actually. Interesting. Is this our room? I 
That whole last day, Edie just watched us pack and didn't say a word. Until supper, when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edie, specific. I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last... I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. Ooh. Okay. It's all very dark. Just very dark. The power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. When my mom sailed the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Or other entrance? Had a key to it. We're in the library. Oh. We're in the library. Oh. That thing you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories. I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning, okay? History of the Finches by Edie Finch. Dear Edith, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. Ah, yes. The tides. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. Interesting. God, it smelled awful. You know, I've seen that house every day of my life. But I never thought I'd go back to it. This is cool, though. This is actually when really cool. When the fog rolled in, I lost my way. Uh, just keep going. Just keep going straight. I got turned around. For a while, I wandered. Right, this is terrifying. I started seeing things. Don't run! Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. But when I saw them, they felt like old friends. That night, a lot of things came back to me. Right. Or maybe I came back to them. <laughs> the 
things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and... Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it! Let go! Mama! I didn't scream, but... Mom dragged me to the car. I never saw Great Grandma Edie again. The next morning, the band came to pick her up, but she was already gone. After that, we moved around a lot. We both tried to make the best of it. Oh, ooh, 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 yes. A few years went by. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. <coughs> the rest happened pretty quickly. She got better for a while. And then she didn't. And then I was alone. The last finch left alive. Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. And appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. I am not being born. This journal was supposed to be for you. But now I hope you'll never see it. I just want to meet you and tell you all these stories myself. But I guess if you're reading this now, things didn't work out that way. Wait, what do you mean things didn't work out that way? This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. Wait. A story by Giant Sparrow. For Shirley Dallas. Okay, oh my. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, I'm speechless. <sighs> I, I'm speechless. That did not happen. Edith. I mean that this this was a great game. <laughs> this was really good, but like I'm upset. <laughs> I am so upset at what happened. Oh my god. Like, I mean, all the stories, like, I get it. They were sad and everything. I understand now, Mama, why she was the way she was with, with Grandma. She just didn't want the curse, you know, the family curse to just keep continuing on. Mama died, and then Edith ends up dying, I'm assuming from childbirth complications. 
I don't know. It's like she knew she was gonna die. Like... And then now her son is like literally the last finch. So he better be getting some... He better have a harem of girls impregnate like five, ten bitches <laughs> to continue on the blood... Spread that shit like a wildfire. <laughs> Get your ass in jail if you need to. <laughs> spread the finch gene and continue it on that's what he needs to do at this point <laughs> oh my god you know it's a blessing that she had a boy because at least he can spread the seed everywhere <laughs> continue on the bloodline but that's that's that actually hit me pretty hard that ending that my eyes started watering like out of nowhere <laughs> i was like she did not die and then just tears came out god <sighs> that's so upsetting but i love the credit scene i love how they have the animators and i'm assuming like their family with their kids and things like that or of them when they were younger i like that this is cute <laughs> Very, very, very cute. God. But yeah, but definitely Edie's obsession with just the home and just the family and things like that. Like, I can get where Edie's coming from, but then I get with the mom, where the mom is coming from now. I, I get why she was the way she was, because I guess she just had the sensible brain. Like, we can't be living like this. I'm tired of being part of a family that's a literal death sentence, <laughs> you know, like it's, I don't blame her. I do not blame her at all anymore. Jeez. Very good game. Very good game. I enjoyed this a lot. <laughs> I really enjoyed this. The end. Ooh, the replay of story option is now available. Select Edith to play from the beginning. <gasps> that is cool. Okay, so now we can... Okay, okay, okay. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Because I was going to say... Um, since I have more time, we can actually do the stories with the music now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Replay a story. Yes. Lewis. Replay. Yes. Oh, yes. With the music. Lewis's yes. room smelled very, very familiar. I'm sure it did. Let's do that his story. <laughs> Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. He kept working at the cannon, but he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to wander. I asked him to describe it. Well, I'm going to go a different way. He said go he down. started small, imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. Then something moved. Bats. And toads. And things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. But he took it very seriously. Ooh, the music is I definitely adding on. He'd find himself. But he found something more. Ah, uh, yes. 2.5D perspective. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, 
tireless, focused. Like a whole new Lewis. I don't remember this section. So I let him go on. I even encouraged him. Is this new? I do not remember any of very this. Promising at first. He told me he'd made a new friend. Hello, Doggo. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. I like how I don't remember most the of this. Slowly, brick by brick. That's actually pretty wild. This I remember. Then he made musicians. songs for them to play. Hello. I'm back again. He talked about starting a band. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. He no longer spoke at the cannery. But his chopping was as reliable as ever. Oh, I'm the best then chopper. One day it struck him that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor. Then he won. And he won. Yeah. <laughs> they begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna pick a different path. He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. My city. New Louisville. <laughs> New liability. <laughs> St. Louis. He started drifting away from our reality. Move boats. There we go. Grab the fish. There we go. Minneapolis. Until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. No, Mama. I want to keep imagining. But no, F this psychiatrist for like encouraging him to keep going. She should be In fired. Lewis, though, he heard rumors of a beautiful prince. Beautiful prince. Prince was on his own quest for radiant rainbows. <laughs> radiant rainbows. Whee! Oh, my bad. I didn't mean to go through the rainbow. Do not destroy it. Yes. I'm going to destroy it. Rip. He followed the sound of his electric guitar. Electric sitar. Oh, sitar. Whoops. I said guitar. <laughs> His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Oh, yes. Very beautiful. Even then, his logic remained sound. Hello, Prince. He knew oh. the world was all in his imagination. But oh, he yes. was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. 
Dude, that king is moving so fast. <laughs> Earth Prince, that prince is moving so fast. For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. I'm gonna go to the left this struck, time. That the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. Ah, yes. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. You say that, Lewis. Ah, I don't think we ever got to see, like, an actual, like, look at him. Interesting. Ah, yes. This is the fateful scene, the fateful situation. Began to forget the world we know. <sighs> this is so heartbreaking, man. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. Should have pulled him out of that job, changed psychiatrists, everything. He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. Jeez. I still thought I could save him. Bitch, you saved Even nothing. Even he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. The palace would be packed with his companions. Everyone's cheerful. Including the wise Calico who'd insisted on inviting him. I won't get shook though at the end, because I know what's coming. Oh wait, no, no, this way. Waited. Holding his crown. Yes. There was only one thing left to do. Oh boy. Bend down his head. Mrs. Finch, your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. Next story. Let's do Gregory. Yes. Dear Kay, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Like something funny was happening, but only he could see it. I think he saw things the rest of us don't. Yo. <laughs> Wee. Back to you over, Gregory. It's time to hold on, sweetie. Mama, take me out. Hello. She's so responsible. Leaving a baby in a tub like this, like, come on. I can stay in the water. You reminded me so much of Calico. Lost in his imagination. 
I got your toes. I got your toes. <laughs> Whatever it was, he saw. <laughs> I really hope this song is not copyrighted. Baby being too happy. But I could feel him slipping away. Sorry about that, Gregory. I know you did everything you could. Maybe if I hadn't called that night. See, my thing though, like even even if yes, the 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 tub water came up, right? My thing though is like, there's so much I don't understand. Did did Gregory grab it? About Gregory. About everything. Mm. I know what happened wasn't your fault. I wanted to turn around. I'm sure he's happy. And he'd want you to be happy too. Mm. Good luck, Kay. Love, Sam. And we're gonna do Gus next, because I believe Gus we didn't was was part of that same episode too. A poem for Gus, who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard, before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. Whee! Father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. I tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom, were the words that I I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Yay. Let me kiss the bride. Ow. <laughs> oh. When the time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign, held up his middle finger. Thank you. <laughs> Panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. Rain came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power. But all my father said to this was, make the music louder. Ooh, okay. That still got me. <laughs> I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone, just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't until we found you. Replay a story. Sam. Yes.
Dawn, I promise you'll never forget this weekend. Yes, sir. These memories are going to last perfect. Oops. <laughs> I didn't think that was going to progress the dialogue. Weekend, isn't it? I will never forget this weekend, Dad. That's the spirit. Okay, got it. I'm going to take some pictures, okay? Just be careful. The camera's older than you are. Aww. There's a picture here. You're right, Dad. It's starting to clear up. Still freezing, though. Definitely should not have drunk all that coffee. Hmm. Bam. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's a keeper. Dude, coffee just makes you go like no one's business. Coffee's no saying, joke. I'm not always gonna be here, Don. You'll need to remember this stuff if you want to survive. I'll be fine, Dad. You know who else thought he was gonna be fine? Some guy who died. Don, I'm being serious. I know, Dad. You're always serious. Doesn't being out here make you want to chill out? Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't been out here in 20 years. And that was a mistake. Don, don't you think you could find something more interesting to photograph? No. Where was it? Dad! Hey. Good eyes, Don. Before you take the shot, let me get a picture of it. Dad, I... Just breathe. Turn off your imagination. Focus on your target. Let me get behind you. Do I have to do this? Don, you don't have to do anything. But if you want to survive, you'll need to be strong. All right, in three, two, one. Bang! <laughs> Elbows. Great shot, Don. <laughs> oh. I'm proud of you, Don. Always remember that, okay? Dad, it's twitching. I think That's it's That's totally so normal, Don. Just focus on the camera. Try not to think about Dad! It. That just must have been so traumatizing. God. All right, next up is Walter. Yes. Goodbye, everyone. I can't believe I've been down here for 30 years. It's still wild. He was down here and nobody knew. On that first day, Edie. after the shaking started, I didn't think I'd survive the evening. But after a few days, I settled into a routine. That's what kept me sane. Okay, I forgot how I did the Having a schedule, living for today. I always expected to be dead tomorrow. But if you wait long enough, you get used to anything. Even a monster on the other side of the door starts to feel normal. Almost friendly. <laughs> and then one day, everything just... stop. Whatever that thing was, it was gone. Maybe it got tired of waiting. Or maybe I just got tired of being afraid. It's been a week now, the longest in 30 years. I'm done waiting. Yeah. I have to leave while well, I still can. Yeah. Well, you left all right. The world, <laughs> that's what she left. God, it's so wild, like, eating all that canned food for 30 years and, like, holy... 
he must be so unhealthy though because you got to think back then i think there were like some toxic heavy metals and stuff within canned foods so like he probably just got filled with so many of just toxic chemicals in his body i know it's out there somewhere Whatever killed Barbara and Molly and Calvin. Maybe this is all a mistake. Let's break this wall open. But I need to stop living the same day, even if it kills me. Whatever's out there. I want you to know, I'm ready for it. I'm going to appreciate all of it, especially the food. I don't mind if I only have a year left. Or a month. Or even or a, a second. Week. I'd be happy with one more day. Well, he had a few seconds. All right, and the last story is Milton. Yes. Hello, Milton. Milton Finch in the magic paintbrush. Ah. Well, it looks like that is it for What Remains of Edith Finch. <laughs> I had loads and loads of fun playing this. Hope you guys enjoyed this playthrough as much as I did. I enjoyed all of the stories. <laughs> Every single one of them was very interesting and um, some tugged at heartstrings more than others. Some uh, Molly gave me <laughs> a lot of like, what the fuck moments, um, but I am really happy I played this game. <laughs> I really enjoyed it a lot, and um, I just hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. <laughs> but unfortunately, we are at an end of this adventure, but we have more awesome adventures to go on with different games. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed this, hope you have an awesome day, and I will see you in the next adventure. Bye-bye, Yus! -bye,